how do you stop Derrick Henry? Um, how do you stop Derrick Henry? It, I mean, it's going to be a collective thing. 11 guys. Like, you got to play great up front, which is obviously a huge component of it, but you got to get 11 hats to the ball. Um, you have to assume that he's going to break a tackle. You can never assume that the man's going to make it. Um, and I think you got to be aggressive. I think the, the – I mean, he has success – um, regardless of your approach, but I think the people that really attack him, I think that's the best way to go. You know, so that's that's the philosophy we're going to carry this week. We're going to get after him, and and all eleven are going to be part of it. It looks like they're throwing him more than they have in the past. What what element have you seen in their offense with that? Uh, I, I really think that that's always kind of been a byproduct of their, their system. You know, obviously their heavy run and heavy play action off of that run, <laughs> and. Um, when the, the play, play action is not there, he is – I think Tannehill's kind of always been quick to get to the check down, regardless of who that guy is. So um, he's always going to be a big part of their offense from a passing perspective. Is there a guy – was there a guy when you played who was a Derrick Henry-like guy? I mean, uh, just in terms of the size-speed ratio? Right. The the Giants, the Taylor Jacobs, was that his name? Yeah, Brandon yeah. Jacobs. Brandon Jacobs, that his name? Yeah. Very similar in that yeah. way. You know, tall, um, big, fast – Violent, uh, yeah, very similar in that way. I, I would say Derrick Henry's probably a better version of, but um, both exceptional big backs. Granted, the thing with Jacobs, though, was that, I mean, he took so many hits that he wore down as the season went on, and he kind of dealt with injuries and stuff like yeah. that. With Henry, it seems like there's no – he's not slowing down at all. I mean, he stays healthy, and, and he's been able to do this now for three years in a row or so. Yeah, d talking to people that know him well um, – I've heard he's just got an amazing work ethic and, and workout regime and nutrition recovery, the whole thing. So um, he takes great care of his body, and he's extremely strong. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's proven to be very durable. He's going to be a huge, huge challenge this week, which we're excited about. So you have an issue at safety um, without Marcus. How do you, I mean, he was your senior member <laughs> in the secondary, right. probably put people in a lot of good positions. Like So you lose that against a team that is very, like you said, heavy play action. Right. Uh, how do you adjust? Yeah, we got a group of guys that got to step up. You know, it's uh, um, it's frustrating, obviously, when guys get hurt. Uh, you never want it to happen. And the thing about Marcus was I think he was finally starting to really grasp what we were doing, and, and uh, I thought he was getting better every single week. So it's definitely it's going to hurt missing him. Um, fortunately, we do have good safety depth. You know, getting Neesman back, getting Ashton back this week is going to be a huge part of that. And um, and you know, by Sunday we'll figure out who's the the best. If not, maybe by committee to to replace him. Um, AJ Brown and Julio Jones they're dealing with injuries, so the check they might not play. How much does that change your uh, game plan or preparation for their passing attack? Yeah, it, it probably changes us a little bit more on third down than it does on first and second down because, you know, when they do run their play action and they do what they do from a passing perspective, um, it's it's the scheme as much as it is the man. You know, when it gets to third down, it comes down to matchups, and um, obviously you better have an answer for both of those guys. So, uh, But they have a good uh, wide receiver regime outside of those two, so it's going to be a um, it's gonna be a tough challenge regardless. But I think you just – in your back pocket, you always have to have an answer for, for when those two guys get revved up. You know, you, I've been part of those games, you know, whether it be Julio, whether it be Brown, whether it be, you know, whatever great receiver out there. And, and the stat line is just out of whack at the end of a game. And you just you don't want that to ever happen. So you always have to have an answer in the, in the back pocket for those guys that get, they get heated up. Jim, it looks like you're, you're doing some rotating at corner with Gidry's play a little bit. Mm -hmm. And also, safety. I think Wilson played a little bit in Denver. Yep. Are you are you are you okay with that of kind of playing committees back there, or, or would you like to find answers? No, because I, I, I think each guy kind of has their unique skill set, and um, each guy's been getting better every week as we play. So. Uh, I think by it, it's something that I'm not accustomed to and I've never done, especially from a corner perspective. I've done it at the safety position. I've done it linebacker. Obviously, D-line is always rotating. Um, but I've never seen it at the corner. Um, uh, Tony Odin, who's our corner coach, who's doing an exceptional exceptional job with those guys, um, he's comfortable with it. And uh, he, he's really helped us all embrace, you know, what each kind of, kind of brings, you know. And, and it's going to help, um, in my opinion, getting these guys to develop where we need them to be. I think practice is great, and it's a huge part of their development, but playing on Sundays is ultimately the, the way that you get guys better. And um, 
So as long as we do it, I feel like we'll get a good group out of this. On, on third downs, um, Titans, when they get third and short, they're able to really get the first down with ease because, you know, obviously you got Henry Bowen, you force them to third and long, and they got a pass, they struggle a little bit. So obviously you probably noticed that. So what do you have to do to make sure you can keep them in third and longer situations? <laughs> that is the magical question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it goes back to the first question you guys asked, like being able to handle Derrick Henry, you know, because – um, obviously, him as a runner is a problem. And then once he gets going, their play action becomes a problem. And then they don't even have third down. You know, it's just first, second, first, 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 second. You know, so, um, yeah, this, it, it all starts with stopping the run. It all starts with stopping the run. Can you talk about Michael Carter and how he's come along? Yeah, like, here's a young guy, um, especially in the secondary, that um, – you know, you're always careful about having expectations for rookies, you know, especially on the back end because it's just such a trial by fire and it's um, it's different, so much different than the college game back there and the talent that you play against and the scheme that you see and the whole deal. So we were really careful about our expectations for him. And I, uh, I really feel like he's exceeded um, our expectations. He's done an exceptional job back there. He's a guy that gets consistently better. Um, he has become um, a real NFL corner and a real NFL nickel, and um, I'm excited about his future. I really am. Well, overall, you guys did pretty well on third down against the Broncos, but on third and longs, it seemed to be a struggle. I think he gave up a couple plays of longer than 20 yards, uh, and maybe three on, on those third and longs. So how do you explain that happening, and how do you make sure it doesn't happen before? I mean, it was a missed tackle. It was actually two missed tackles. That's all it was, you know. Schematically, I think we were in a good place. We just, you know, we got to refine our technique and track on the hip and, and do all the things that we talk about and emphasize and get better from that perspective. Um, and I got to consistently try to put them in the best position to be successful. But, uh, yeah, it's just a few technical things we got to clean up. Jeff, roughing, <clears throat> roughing the passer penalties were an issue here last year. Shaq, I think, has gotten one in each of the last two games. It's hard for these guys now. You can't hit them below the knee. You can't hit the head. Right. What, what's kind of what's your emphasis in regard to roughing the passer when you work on these defensive linemen? Yeah, it, the, the the biggest part I think it, obviously like the the one step that you have, you know, like. You, you push that, but you definitely got to be careful. Um, for me, the biggest emphasis has to just keep your head out of contact, keeping your face and your head away from the quarterback at all costs, straining at the highest level not to hit him with your face or head because regardless if you're within a step or not, that's getting cold. You know, On top of that, they're getting a FedEx the next day too regarding a, uh, a fine. So it's uh, – yeah, it's just having the discipline and the strain to just keep your face out of contact. You know, it's 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 hard because it's something that we we can't have. It's something that we we absolutely emphasize on not doing. Um, but knowing Shaq, like this was a byproduct of strain. This is a byproduct of trying to get there so badly, like trying to finish and get a sack, like it's like oxygen. You know, so it's the intent is right. We just gotta make sure that the intent is is controlled at the same time. Pick up more. How is uh, Jamie and Sherwood doing at shedding blocks? It seems like sometimes he turns his back on a blocker and kind of goes like that. Is that something you try to avoid? And just in general, how's he doing? Um, he's getting better. Like the, the ankle obviously set him back a little bit, and you know, and, and getting him back and getting him healthy. And I think he's not probably 100% yet. So um, that's part of it. I think young, especially young linebackers, and especially young linebackers that are converting from safety and coming closer to the ball, um, not accustomed to using their hands, not accustomed to all the keen diagnosis that goes into playing linebacker and being closer to the line of scrimmage. So that's what you're seeing. You're seeing. Um, a young guy learning his way, you know, and I think that we're all committed to the fact that, you know, it goes back to the corners. It goes back to all these young guys that we're playing. The byproduct of playing them will will be better players, you know, as we go. Um, Jamie and will get better, and and he and he has gotten better, but um, we all got a long way to go still, you know, and and they recognize and acknowledge that too that they got a long way way, way to go. He's got to be consistent with his hands. He's got to refine his eyes. Um, there's a lot of things there, but uh, still very excited about Jamie and what he could be. How has um, Quincy Williams done in the starting role? I mean, you, first of all, his speed, his explosiveness, they, they jump off the tape. You know, he's a guy that just has different speed. Um, 
different quickness, different explosiveness, um, very unique in that way. He's a guy that when I was in Atlanta that um, I was super excited about when he was coming out of Murray State and, and was hoping to get him there. And um, obviously it didn't work out, but this is, you know, this is finally our opportunity to be together a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's it, obviously that he's got some uh, background with this system in that Jacksonville ran some similar concepts at times. So it's not a clean slate. It's not starting from ground zero. But still, there's a lot of stuff that we do that's new to him. You know, and the fact that he's only been here two weeks, um, there is still some learning in progress and trial by fire. And, uh, but, like, he's a guy that the skill set, the speed, the the mindset, the toughness, the all of that um, is is something that gets all of us really excited about his future.